right, welcome to episode 12 of Ref the District, your DC sports cast. I'm Nathan Perry. With me, my co-host, co -host, it's the Stoner. We normally broadcast live every Sunday at 10 a.m. here on YouTube. You can catch the recording later on. Today, we are recording it a day early. So if something changes overnight, I'm blaming Stoner on this. Okay, I'll take the it's hit. All, it's all... It's all your fault. You can also catch us on Twitter at Ref the District. If you need to hit us up an email, it's right there, Ref the District at gmail.com. Stoner, how you doing, man? Why, you know, you know, we're here Saturday night recording. We'll be pushing this out, you know, Sunday. How do you feel about that? We got the game going on right now. Yeah, I'm I'm so. I'm like a little I got like a little I'm a little antsy because the, <laughs> I know the game is going on and I can't see it. But actually usually I watch these games delayed. You on, on my DVR because I love fast forwarding through commercials <laughs> and half times in between periods and all that. So I don't really have that big of a problem with it, but it is going to be kind of weird. We're going to talk all this great stuff about the wizards and the surge that they're on and they're going to end up, you know, getting beat by a terrible Pistons team tonight. Yeah. We're, I we're definitely going to, we're definitely going to speak ourselves into some horrible mistakes there. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I personally, I can't, I can't watch the game at another time. I'm just like, I'll, cause I love interacting with Twitter. Oh yeah. And like, I'm not, not even if I'm posting, it's just, I like reading, you know, about the games as they're going on uh, and seeing what, you know, when there's a big play, like immediately going to Twitter be like, Oh, what does everyone like? What does everyone think about right. this type thing? So yeah, I get that. Yeah. Probably a little bit of a problem for me to be that much into, into Twitter during the game, just enjoy the game. Um, no, it's not. That's not. A, like that's said, not a bad thing because I I have to stay away from Twitter for that reason because I know I'm 30 yeah. minutes behind or something like that. But yeah, but today is a, a a great day if you're a Washington sports fan because it's a it's a triple play day. Nats played already, Caps played already, and one and, and one, yeah, and then you got the Wizards. So it's it's fun this time of year when all three teams are playing at one time. I, I hate I hate to I hate to do this. It might be a quadruple play if I recall correctly, because uh, the DC United, in fact, are five minutes in right now oh. to their game against the New York City football. Oh, nice! So, just I just guess. to note that because I I was just like, you know, you know we we are a DC right. you know sports cast, right. so we want to include them. You know, there are some changes going to be happening here that you'll notice if you've been with us for the first 11 episodes. Uh, we're going to change things up a little bit. One, we're going to segment our show out a little bit. We're going to be talking about the game, which is our midsection here. That's the meat and potatoes. That's going to be one big topic that we're going to want to tackle. Today, we're going to be tackling the mid-round QBs, kind of doing a review on there and what we think of them. Uh, but we will have the warm-up where we're going to be talking about all of our DC sports teams kind of going through the week, how they've done, kind of review there. Uh, and then we'll go into the game. The game is mostly going to be centered around our Washington football team. Uh, we'll occasionally still bring in some of the other, you know, sports, especially if there's something big to talk about. Uh, but mostly we, we, you know, we love our football team and we're going to, we're going to kind of center the ref, the district around. Them. Well, let's be um, honest. The NFL is king. It's the king anywhere you go in media, on television, on radio, everything. It revolves around the NFL. So that's why it's our meat and potatoes of our show, too. That's fair. And then we're going to go into the post game. Post game, anything is open. That's usually we're going to see our still not sponsored GBU segment uh, will be there. But today we have something else. We'll get to that after the game. First, let's get into our warm up. How has this week gone, Stoner, for our Washington team? Uh, if I may, before we get into that, we, we're talking about how we're changing our format a little bit. Uh, tweak, we're always tweaking because we're always trying to make it a little bit better each time. But it's funny. It, maybe it's only funny to me or maybe it's only funny to it, – it's definitely only funny to me. But at, at the beginning of the show, when you play our, our little promo before we get started – I can't hear it on my end. So my only visual is of you doing this here. Just bopping along. And, so. and I don't hear anything. All I see is you bopping along. And I just want to just bust out laughing, but I know I'm trying to get into focus for what we're about to do. But anyway, 
that aside, uh, talking about our teams this week, the Nats, we talked about them last week, and I don't remember exactly what the record was, but they started yeah, the one, one and six. win. It was one, you know, you know, I think at that point they were one and four, one and five. Yeah. And they went to mm-hmm. one and six, and it was very concerning. It wasn't panic mode yet, but it was concerning. But since then, they've gone four and one. And so they've done kind of what they thought they would. It's weird, though. You've got Strasburg, who has not been right this year. And if you look at his last, before he got hurt, uh, with his with his uh, carpal tunnel as well, his yeah, velocity season. maybe in his last ten to fifteen starts is just steadily decrease, decrease, decrease. That's concerning. Even you can just say, yeah, his velocity was down this game. Let's see about next game. It's been going down, down, down. So mm-hmm. Strasburg hasn't been pitching well. Corbin's been terrible. Scherzer's been up and down. His last game, he was great. His first game. He was okay, second game okay. Uh, but guys like Joe Ross, the fifth starter, and today Eric Fetty was great. He struck out, I believe, nine in five innings. Yeah. He was great. great. starts from those. And you know, the- he was terrible his first game. And then the last two games he's been great. So it's come from unexpected sources. And But then you've also had your horses, like Max has done great. Uh, Zim has just been amazing so far this year. Turner, Soto, all have been great. So it's kind of weird. Pitch so hit home run from from uh, from Zim. Zim today, just yeah. Just, you know, so yeah, I, I think that's a good thing for the team is when you have the the you know your wins are coming from unexpected sources sure. because you expect the the bell cows, you expect those people you're paying big money to to come around eventually, and then you should really start to see something. I, I think I undersold them. Right, so la- you know, we when we talked about them just last week, I gave them you know a whole month and a half yeah. to get back to five hundred. They could be back to five hundred by the end of this week. Well, yeah, so, maybe, maybe. Let's not get too too far ahead of ourselves. But they've been playing well their last five games. They have four been. and one. Yeah, so you know, I thought it was going to take a little bit. Maybe, maybe you know, we'll see if they if they can if uh, they can keep it up. I'm I'm interested to see where where we're going to go with Strasburg there. Sure, that is a you know there's. You know, he had the injury there in the spring uh, training. So, you know, how much of it is the injury from last year that he's still recovering from? How much of it is this hamstring? Uh, there was a big, you know, hoopla about the fact that he had been like kind of working his shoulders in the in the hallway, mm-hmm. and he was upset that the the cameras caught that right. and they were showing that. And he was like, "There's got to be some place where he he you know, he's not being." you know, looked at as, you know, through, uh, you know, the public eye. I don't know if that's the, really, I care about that, you know, his feelings on that. Cause I, I think it's important for, for fans to know what's going on to, you know, a certain, a certain extent. I know managers and teams and players don't like, probably like to keep some right. things a little bit, uh, secret and sacred, but you know, more from more information, the better, especially for us, right? We're, we're doing a sports cast. Having that kind of information is that's good. Is key. That's right. That's good stuff. But of course the concerning with his health it is very high. The concern is very high. And, and let's remember that they gave him, the Nats gave him a ton of money and he's the sole reason that Anthony Rendon is no longer on this team. So if he can't perform to his level, his expected level for the next few years, we're going to sit there and say, maybe we made a mistake and we should have kept Rendon and let Strauss. Let's back up a little bit here. Yeah. The sole reason? The sole yeah. reason? Yeah. And he, he was not the sole reason yes, why they didn't keep. No, 100%. He was not, Rendon didn't want to be here. We've talked about this. He didn't want to be here. He was going to be going elsewhere anyway. So you mean to tell me sole if reason. they had... Strasburg, you said Strasburg was the sole reason, yes. Stoner. Oh. He was not the sole reason that Rendon didn't stay here. If they offered Rendon as much money as L.A. did, or what are they... Are they the L.A. or the Anaheim? Whatever they are. I don't, I don't pay attention to <laughs> West Coast teams. But the Angels, if... The Nats had offered Rendon the same amount of money that the Angels did. He would have stayed. But they couldn't offer him that much. And also there's the the whole the whole deferred money issue as well. But listen, if they're well, going to offer him that same that's amount a, of money. That's a Nationals thing. Right? Yeah, it's like, national. well, I mean, I know, other team, I know other teams do this. 
but as, as Nats fans, we, we, we have great issue with the fact, and actually to be fair, the players, most players are taking great issue to the fact that a lot of that's deferred money. Right. Um, Which I don't get, that, by the way, if you're going to tell me that in 20 years from now, money. you're still going to pay me 10 what's million. His, cool. What's his face that the, the, what's his name? It's like he, his annual, it's become a holiday. Oh, Bobby Bonilla day. That, yeah, where he just he gets he's like eh, he earned like another million dollars. Yeah, like I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm absolutely good with exactly. That. Which yeah, so I don't understand why. I guess the guys they want their money up front and they want to be able to spend it how they want. They're still getting a ton of money up front. They're just not getting as much, and they get it. I wonder down how the line. how does that work with taxes? I think I think they I think they're really messing themselves up, right? Because yeah. it's just like they could. They could go to like an income tax free place like Texas. You know, you get your you get the you know paycheck here. You play here for Washington. We know that there's a lot of taxes, whether or not you're in Northern Virginia, Maryland, like we are, or in D.C. You're going to be paying some significant taxes there. Yeah. But if you get the deferred money, I'm pretty sure that's the you know taxes 20, are deferred. You know, ten years, you know, ten years you're retired and you want to live in a in Florida or Texas where there's you know tax free money. That's when you get the income tax free. That's when you get the income. Yeah. There you go. But so you know what's weird? Do they do they have to pay state taxes in every state that they go play in? No. They don't? I mean that's where they're working. They're working in but another state. That doesn't work like you, that. You know better. You live you've lived overseas and you're still given taxes in the but, state that you were. Yeah, but the I'm, income but I'm, comes from the Washington Nationals. It's it's no different than a truck driver who drives from one end of the country to the other. Where is their residence? That's where they're going to pay that 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 income tax. That's where they're going to have to to, to so take, they, you know, take out those taxes. So they don't pay any taxes when they go to Canada. They don't pay any income taxes when they play in Canada. I'd have to look uh, at the rules on Canada. See, I mean, we're not taxed. But what I, what I consider here, what I can cons- what I think happens, because yeah. I do have actually Canadian in laws. Ah. Uh, so what I'm pretty sure happens because they the the my sister in law who's the American, she uh, she actually still pays state taxes. So because she's still a resident of the U S. Okay. And has to pay that, and I'm sure it works that way for for the people playing the, with the Blue Jays. We'll have to look it up. It's not really that. No one cares here, really, for the Nationals. Right. But for the Nationals, they're just because they played a game in L.A. doesn't mean they're going to be paying L.A. taxes. Mm. No, their their income comes from you know where where they're from. Okay. It's just a contractor position. You know, just because you or I have to go on a business trip to Colorado doesn't mean all of a sudden okay our paychecks coming out of Colorado. No, it's part of our job to go to Colorado and do work. There. Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering. I mean, we're not tax There's experts. Your, yeah, we're, we're, we're apparently, this is actually, you didn't know this, Ref the District is really, a, you know, we're refing the IRS. As well. And, you know, how the Look, if you're treasury, coming here for tax US advice, treasury. You, you're, you're the problem, not yeah. us. So that's your, that's your fault. So don't, so don't we, come to us for tax advice. We got some grief last week Uh-oh. for getting on a, on a, uh, on a Seinfeld, t- you know, you know, d- you know, completely the, the t- off the tracks yeah. with that 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 Seinfeld talk. Yeah. I can only imagine the comments we'll get this time for going off on like, <laughs> guys, I'm here for sports, oh, not yeah. taxes. Sorry. Get back to the sports. Fine. Anyway, you want to talk about sports? Let's talk about how the Caps ruined what should have been an amazing day yeah. for Backstrom, his thousandth game, and they just get walked. Yeah, by a terrible team, a team that had by won ten games team. all year. And now they're at eleven, and they are. T- <laughs> I mean, that ha- you're going to have a stinker every once in a while. So I don't, I don't have a big issue with them losing that game. They came back today and whooped Philly pretty good. Ovechkin with two more goals. I think playing Philadelphia is just is just always going to. That's like your feel good moment. You're like, you just know it's just going to be an easy game for you because they just been absolutely dominating yeah. Philadelphia this, uh, this year. Yeah, and the, and Philly had a goalie that had played like a total of. 24 minutes in his entire career at the NHL level. And he had never seen anything like Ovechkin. <laughs> just smoking. Just imagine him right that. Him. This guy's got 24 minutes and then you're like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to pitch you against the guy who's now like a, a goal or two away from being fifth all time yeah. in the NHL. You'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be you'll fine. Be fine. He just it's going to be okay. Him. Just go out there. That was awesome. 
So I didn't feel bad for him at all. I can't stand Philly in any sport, uh, yeah. but definitely not hockey. I had a drive behind a guy today with a Philadelphia plate. That was I was just like, come on. You didn't man. you didn't like smash a, into like a Philadelphia Eagle. Uh, no, I'm not ruining my vehicle for that <laughs> kind of punk. Right? No. I hear. Just get out. Just get away. But they de- away. they definitely did kind of ruin Backstrom's night. But again, I think it's just a little bump in the road. They've been playing fine overall. I guarantee you, he doesn't. He doesn't. He does. Like w- the fans cared. There was a lot of big, you know. You know, ticker tape parade type stuff happening. A lot of interviews. A lot of you know, it's a big moment. Sure, it's a huge moment. Is uh, is Backstrom but... a Hall of Famer? That's a that's a very interesting debate at this point. Let's just say tomorrow that, he yeah. he falls off a cliff and breaks his leg and he can't play ever again. Sure. Is he a Hall of Famer? I don't. I don't want to get the messages that we're going to get for you just hey, saying this. Hey, right? I'm just saying you what it. I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, honestly, I would, I would love for people to watch the show and subscribe to the channel, but you are putting a lot of bad mojo out into the air right it's now. It's just a what if. That's all. I'm just asking. It's what a if. bad what if. Okay, let's just say you never what if an injury on one of your star. All players. right, let me let me rephrase that. Let's say Nikki Backstrom just decides, you know what, I'm going back to Sweden. I don't want to play hockey anymore. Retires. Is he a Hall of Famer? I think this would be a good post game discussion oh. for another day. Right. I'm I was just curious. Put a pin in this. I'm gonna put a pin in. Well, this. just give me a, right. just give me a we'll snap get... reaction, yes or no. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. That's my snap reaction. But I think I think we can go through this a little further, and then maybe I change my mind because I have changed it on uh, something else. But we'll, uh, that's a little teaser. What All we right. like to call a teaser in the business. We'll get to that. Let's talk about the Wizards. We mentioned they're playing right now. We're gonna don't we're gonna don't stick say anything, feet. by the way, because I'm DVR. I don't want to know if you're okay. if you're keeping I'm, up. I'm I'm not. Okay. I, I could pull it up, but I'm not going okay, to. Good. All right. Um, they're playing right now, so we're gonna stick our feet in our mouth. But the Wizards have started kind of turning things around. I like this guy we got from Chicago. Gafford has been, you know, he he you know injured. He was he looked good pre-injury. Mm-hmm. Out for three weeks, comes back. He's looking pretty good, and the team plays well with him. They do. He brings a ton of energy on both ends of the floor. He brings offensive energy. He he had at least four blocks yesterday. I believe three of them were on Zion. So that's that's a big deal. Gafford's been playing extremely well in his limited minutes, and I think his minutes are so low because he's just not in basketball shape yet because of the injuries that he's had. So I think that's why they're keeping his his minutes pretty low because you'll see him huffing and puffing up and down the court. So once he gets back in shape, I think he'll get a lot more minutes and push kind of Alex Len out of – he might even get into the starting lineup. I compare him to I, – I have no idea if this is a good comparison, but I was thinking about this today. But Clint Capella, when he was in Houston – He's not a guy who's going to put his back to the basket and make all these moves and hook shots and all this other stuff. He's just a guy that's going to rim run, and he's going to get lobs, and he's going to block shots. He's going to get dunks. He's going to make it easier for the point guard, all of this. So that's what I hope he can be is a Clint Capella type and just just get those energy plays and, and, yeah. and help. The, and they have been playing a lot better. If you remember back when I said they needed to go in their next 16, they needed to go 10 and 6. So far, I can't do the math, sorry, but the last I checked, they needed to go 4 and 1 in their last 5 in order to meet that 10 and 6 threshold that I put in there. And they're playing all bad teams. Not terrible teams, but bad teams. Like Detroit tonight. Cleveland, I believe, is twice in there. OKC's twice in there, I think. Uh, I, they have one against Golden State, which is the best team they're going to play during this this whole schedule. And so this is where they have their chance to make their run. And before tonight's game, they were half a game out of that 10th spot. And that's yeah. all you can ask for. Just give them a chance. I was about to say that. I was looking at that right now with the standing. So the Pacers are in the ninth spot. They're 12 and a half games back of the Sixers. The 76ers there, Washington tied with the Raptors and the Bulls at 16 and a half games back for that 10th spot. Right now, the Raptors hold the 10th spot. The Bulls, who were four games above the Washington Wizards like a week ago, mm-hmm. 
have just absolutely tanked, uh, which, you know, that's where the, the Wizards players went to. Oh, and right. now all of a sudden, they're, they like, they think they've lost five in a row. Yep, they have lost five in a row here, three and seven in the last 10. Washington definitely has kind of worked themselves back into potentially getting one of these playoffs. Spots. Yeah, and, and Chicago's best player, Zach Levine, he's hurt. He just hurt himself the other day, so I don't know how long he's going to be out. But that really helps. I don't know that they are they really have a shot at nine or eight or seven. Aren't, aren't nine, aren't they like about three games they're four out? Games, four they're ga- four yeah. games back from the pace. That's not going to happen. So, yeah, so they've, they've, 10th is really their, their only shot. But I tell you what, do you want to play the Wizards with a healthy Beal in Westbrook for a one-game shot or – two game shot or anything no you do not want to play them right now no sir so that they're gonna they're gonna scare some people if they can get to that 10th spot i think they can do it but could potentially me, take that over ask me two weeks today. ago and i would have said oh they're terrible they're not, they got no shot at this you know what i mean <laughs> you just right now they're playing well so you kind of feel like they have a shot at it they start right. doing terrible so, so you put me on the spot yeah. for for Backstrom Hall of Fame. Yeah. This, this we can talk about this another time. I just want you on the spot. Yeah. Does Westbrook break the triple duck, double record this season? Uh, well, you'll have to He's remind eleven me. away, eleven away for the all time. The uh, yep, Oscar Robertson's the big O's. They only got like all time record thirteen or fourteen games, right? What, what's the record Somewhere right now? Twenty two and thirty three. Their so record 50, is 22 and 33. 55. So they got 17 games left. So 11 out of the next 17. No, I don't think he will. You don't think Not he will? this year. He won't tie it. He won't break it. Because I think he needs 12 to break it right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't think so. Could I, be 11 by the end of the night. I mean, could be. some of the things that he's doing, it's not even fair that we don't celebrate it. Because we just kind of expect it now. He had, yeah. what, he had 36, 14, and 9 last game. And it was just like, eh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's okay. What do you yeah, mean that's pretty nice? Short of the tri- triple Anybody double. Anybody else there. who does that, they're they're going crazy and and asking for his uh, jacket size for the Hall of Fame induction. <laughs> I mean, that's just amazing numbers. And you're he's like, he's a lock for the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, if you want to, no, no, we're not put me on the spot for that. He's first this out. season. He, he's 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 likely going to average another triple double. The only player to do average a triple double for a season you know, multiple times in a multiple, multiple seasons. And he's probably going to do it again. I think that will definitely kind of be shuffled to the, the uh, footnotes though. If the wizards don't get to the playoffs. Oh, sure. They, yeah, they need to, if, if he does it and they make the playoffs, they win that playoff game, you know, they're into it, you know, into the actual playoffs where they actually get a full series. You have to consider that as, you know, he won't, he's not going to get, you know, he might get a few MVP votes, but he really, realistically, unless they do a huge turnaround and surge into the playoffs, not going to get a significant amount. But this is MVP style play that you're seeing from, from from Brody, and it, you're right, most of it's being kind of swept on, under the rug, and his, largely because you're on a team that's as bad as yeah. Wizards. And his rough start is what is keeping him from all of the talk, and he didn't even make the All Star game. Imagine he's going almost, he's not, like you said, he's not going to be the MVP, but he's going from not even making the all-star game to being in at least the discussion for MVP. He's probably somewhere around 10 or 12 or something, but at least he's in the discussion. I know I considered him a snub for the all-star game, but I'm also a you know, fan of the game. <laughs> right. So being you know, like, I'm not exactly a bias source. So. Or unbiased source. You're unbiased definitely a source. I'm, I'm definitely a bias right. source. Correct. But he didn't. Words des- are hard. He, yeah, he didn't. He didn't deserve the All Star game this year. Um, but they, if they it was a week, point guards, so I'll give him. If that, it was like so. two weeks later, maybe he would have gotten in because that's when he had just started to pick up his. Yeah, play. I think the slow start put him behind. But if you look at his stats, even at the All Star break, he had solid stats at the All Star right. break. Now he's he's playing at an entirely different level right now yeah he is uh so let's have a second all-star game he's your starting point guard <laughs> right. go for it we'll see but then i guess maybe bill misses out because bill's injury didn't have a great game the last name and again i love it you know i mentioned this earlier i like it when the team wins 
when it's coming from unlikely spaces. You know it's coming from Westbrook. You know, it's supposed to come from Beal. He has an off night, but then you get Gafford, who is, again, like you mentioned, wonderful lob target for Westbrook. You know, Rui has been kind of... I'm really kind of expecting more from him. Mm. He's like, he's shown those flashes. He's finally got 82 games underneath his belt at this point. Right. So finally a season, he's no longer technically a rookie. Um, so I think that, you know, can him continuing to develop his game? It's going to be, this is an exciting wizards team. And so by the way, you're, you're only get rid of Scott. Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. It, it, your guy that you were bashing your club in earlier Bertans. <sighs> I think in his last whatever games, he's something like 20 for his last 40 or something like that. He's just I been ate killing. Crow. I ate that crow oh. last week. Yeah. I admitted my, I admitted that I was wrong. But they need him. He, they do. They need him he's bad. been out. He's out again oh. uh, playing. The game's playing right now. He's out he, for personal reasons. So yeah, we'll two see games what, in a row. What's what's going but on with that? Think who, um, who, think who Westbrook has been feeding lately. For three pointers, Isak Banga, who is terrible. I wish he'd never get on the court. Um, I've, he's yeah. got a fun name. Yeah, the guy's got a great name. He's a, he's a I hustler. Love saying he's it. a battler. He's a grinder. He is not a Bang. good player. Um, Avdia is shooting threes. Alex Len has been shooting a couple of threes. Stop that. Stop doing that. <laughs> Find your shooters, but you then they don't have it. You mentioned the stat earlier where they were horrible from three-point yeah. range. I think we understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, these are the guys you have shooting. Th- yeah, that's a bad But thing. I think Beal last game was like 0-4-8 yeah. or something. You have off shooting nights. Yeah. It, it, happens. it happens. It definitely happens. So we'll see. I, I, I'm hoping the Wiz, they're playing the Pistons right now. Again, this is a recorded version of Ref the District. Normally we're live at 10. You can always join us here on our YouTube channel uh, at 10 o'clock. We will interact with the chat if you wanted to p- put something in there. This is a recorded issue, uh, recorded uh, you know, time. So we might not be up to date with what's happening with the Wiz. Hopefully we didn't ruin anything for the team. Yeah. I would really hate to see that. Sue us but, if you got a problem with it. You can sue us. Not me. Please not me. <laughs> All stoner no, property just, of the stoner. No, just you can go after Stone the, Dog Twenty Three on Twitter. After the business, go after our business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we got so much, so much put into this. A lot of fun here on the warm up. Let's go to the game. Let's get to to what we're here for today, and that's our mid round QBs. Now, I wanted to talk about these because Washington's picking at nineteen. You know, unless they trade up, they're not getting one of the big names. Right. Uh, At 19, you might have Mac Jones, which I don't want anything to do with. Same. Um, You know, I think that they go somewhere different. There's been a lot of talk with Rivera right now that, and and, and John Kime out of ESPN says that they possibly, if they move up just a few spots, it's probably going to get a linebacker or one of the offensive linemen. Linebacker. That's that would be my pick. Would be great. So there's kind of some sneaky things in there. That uh, Rivera said that uh, potentially, hey, you got to when you have only five Zoom calls and somebody's opted out, you got to have all of uh, you got to use all of those to see where they're at. Do they move up for Micah Parsons? Who knows? That would be kind of a sweet, you know, sweet deal for for Washington and their fans. Uh, But possibly, you know, there was a lot of talk about them moving up for Trey Lance. You hated the idea unless they were all all in and loved him. I'm lukewarm. I think that he's got a you know a high ceiling, but that floor can be awfully low That's right. for a QB playing out of you know North Dakota, only a few you know a few games underneath the belt. So it'll be interesting. But that's what you're going to get with a lot of QBs, especially these mid round QBs. Mm-hmm. None of them have a full game. If they did, they'd be going in the first round. It'd be Zach Wilson. Round. It'd be Zach Wilson. Right. Now. These QBs that we're going to be talking about, Kellen Mond, Kyle Trask, Davis Mills, and Jamie Newman, Mm -hmm. are realistically looking at, they could go as early as the second round, Mm -hmm. possibly all the way up to the fifth. Sure. I'd be surprised if you see them in the sixth or the seventh, Uh, but could be, especially with one of these guys, I think actually could easily fall to the sixth, sixth round. So let's get into it. Let's start off with Kellen Mond. Okay. All right. This is a six foot three, 217 pound 
uh, QB out of Texas A&M, the most experienced out of all the guys we're going to be talking about yeah. today. Didn't he what start is, four, four years? He's a four-year he, yeah, starter. Yeah, he's actually he's got four years underneath his belt. Um, I like those kind of guys. He's steadily improved mm -hmm. through 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 that, so that's good. This is someone who is very athletic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a threat to run. Uh, you know, last season he only had 294, but he had 500 yards on the ground the year before that. Yeah. So this is a dual threat QB. Not that accurate though. That's his downside. Sure. If like if you had a, if you had to pinpoint something for him, you're like great experience. You know, he's you know improved. He's got a good size. Six foot three, two seventeen is not a bad size for a QB. You know, um, but he's just not as accurate as you'd like to see. Yeah. So what what about what do you feel about him? Do you feel like he's somebody who Washington should look at? Is this a QB that you're interested in? I like Kellen Mond. I don't love Kellen Mond. I don't love, let's put it out there, I don't love any of these guys, and that's why they're unknown possible mid-round draft picks because we don't know enough about them. But what I like about him is that he's a four-year starter at a Power 5 school. He played in the SEC for four years. He was a starter. All those games, that sort of experience is so much better than say, a Trey Lance who played one year plus half a game or whatever he did last year. Mm -hmm. So I like those guys who have that experience in, in big-time games. It wasn't great, but at least he was the guy all the way through. I don't know if he is anything better than a third-rounder. Now, Washington has two third-round picks this year, right? So if you use one on him, I probably wouldn't hate it. I like Kellen Mond. What's what's your thoughts on him? So, I I think that honestly, someone's going to probably jump on him in the second. Oh, really? I don't, I don't think I I don't think he's going to last to the third. I think that would also be a mistake if 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 Washington took Kellen Mond with their second third round pick, I'd be happier with sure. Him. I think that'd be fine. I think that the accuracy thing is the biggest biggest problem yeah. here. You, we've we dealt with that rookie QB who has accuracy issues and it didn't fix. And I don't know that Kellen Mond would be able to fix it in the time that that Washington and their fans would want him to fix it. In. Yeah. Uh, well, you know who else had an accuracy issue coming out of college? Who was Josh that? Allen. They said it's his true. accuracy was it's atrocious. True. And look at him now. It's true. He's a pro bowler. I don't He's know that it was as bad as Kellen well, Mond, maybe, who yeah. the, his highest his highest percentage was sixty three point three. Okay, so he you know an improvement from his for, from his first year fifty one point five. Yeah. So again, he's he he improved. Yeah, he needs to continue taking those steps. One of the things that that uh, that there's a lot of talk about him, and you see it uh, if you're watching some game stuff, is he didn't really have quality players around mm. him. Uh, comparatively, right? So, um, you know, a lot of people are saying, hey, that's, you know, he 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 threw like this because he didn't have guys who were, you know, like we're going to be talking about Trask here in a moment. That's if somebody who had Kyle Pitts to throw to. Your numbers are going to look good yeah. throwing him to, to guys like that. Oh, yeah. Mond didn't have that. So there's something to be said about that. But then also this is something that I think might scare – Rivera way, not necessarily scare, but might make the uh, Washington football team not take Helen Mond. He was never a full time captain for for Texas A and hmm. Do you do you think that that plays a part here? I think it it probably should. I wonder because there's probably it, something an behind that, thing, right? right? So yeah. it's he he did take control during the senior game. So that was the senior senior bowl game. So that was that's interesting there. Hmm. But never a full time captain as a QB. You, that's kind of something that I feel like Rivera would really put high, you know, kind of impact into that. That he want that experience and that Kellen Mond, like I said, is the only one here who's got the experience uh, that you really are looking for. But then not being a captain, that's something I think that during the Zoom call. That was brought up. Yeah, this has to be brought up by Rivera. Like, why weren't you a captain? Yeah, that's for that's peculiar. For, you know, full time because even 
for Washington last year, Haskins was a captain. And if you look at it, every starting quarterback in the NFL is a captain for their team. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, that might say something negative about your abilities to be a part of the team and to be a leader of the team. Absolutely. I think that's a little bit scary. That's that's a red flag. That'll that'll get you on the old foobar list real quick. Still happy? Are you still happy then that if the Washington takes them with one of the two picks in their third? Yeah. Again, they know more. Ron Rivera knows more about football in his little pinky finger than I know in my entire <laughs> body. Right. So if, if he selects them, he's doing that for a reason. I'm just a dumb fan that says. Well, he's not a captain, and he's got inaccuracies, so he shouldn't be on our team. Well, he knows more than I do, so if he selects him, then I'll, then I'll back him, and, and we'll go from there and see if he develops as a starter later on because they definitely so need that. They, they do. They need a long-term uh, answer at QB. Mm-hmm. What I like about bringing in someone like Bond is because of that athleticism that you can put in packages – for them during their rookie season yeah. where it's either a designed run or it's a, a play that you know is going to be in like an open pass kind of get them in rhythm yeah you know so that one is going to be an interesting one i think both of us have like a third round grade on him so is that what yeah, we're looking at we're, we're okay yeah. if they they take him in the third yeah if they take him so. at 19 i might cry that would be a fatal mistake, I, right. I'm pretty sure. That would that would not well, here, be. Here's another question, though, that, that I have for you is, let's say they do take a quarterback, regardless of where they take him, for first round, second, third, fourth, whatever. Who's the odd man out? Because you're not carrying five quarterbacks. So for sure, you're going to Montez, he can go away unless he's going to be a tight end, which I think is crazy talk. But still, you still got Heineke, Allen, Fitzpatrick, rookie who get who there are they going to carry four no no Al, allen's, uh, allen's allen's the, the odd man out to even me. though Rivera i think i love allen he, he does so that's it's a twofold thing one he's still coming off that injury mm-hmm. so he this is somebody who could just be put on ir this can be somebody who stash on ir stash yeah th- this is somebody who they can much like they did with moss last year cut and then all of a sudden he ends up on IR because nobody's picking up Kyle Allen. Uh yeah. so that's okay. to me like Heineke is you presume healthy, mm-hmm. right? At this point yeah, in, so. in, the, in the stage, right? Should should be healthy. You know, got a little knocked up in the sh- shoulder in the wild card mm-hmm. game, but uh at this point should be good to go. You paid him pretty good money. They paid him a lot more money than they paid Allen. Yes, they did. Like Allen, double. Allen was, t- yeah. Allen was just tendered pretty much the minimum they could probably t- tender. Yeah. Um, so Allen to me is the, the odd man out. You're not okay. getting rid of Fitzpatrick. You oh, paid him not. ten million dollars. Yeah. Uh, he's got the most experience and is probably going to give your team the best chance to win. So right. and then so you'll have a, a QB rookie QB on there. Okay. If they take one. Right. We'll see. Both of us like Kellen Mond. I do. I, I I do like him. I don't love him mid round. Yeah. No, I'd be I'd be happy with it. Uh, third round pick. I think that this somebody who, like I said, you can get some packages in. You can develop their game a little bit. Works really well with the offense that I think that they want to to build there in Washington. Mm-hmm. So we shall see. Let's talk about your band, yeah, yeah. Kyle Trask, yes. your Florida Gator yes, guy. Love him. Kyle Trask, six foot five, the biggest of the big QBs kid. that we're going to be talking about. Yeah. Two hundred and forty, big big kid, but he's not mobile. No, he's a statue. He's he's a statue, um, and probably not the greatest of arm. Right. But he's had some. He had some really good stats there. Really accurate, sixty eight point nine this last season. Yep. Uh, 4,200 yards, 43 touchdowns to only eight interceptions. Right. Just an insane year. Yep. He was he was a a Heisman finalist up until right at the end. Or I don't even know. Did he go to the Heisman? He might have been. I think he might have been a Heisman I, finalist. There was like anyway. two two Alabama guys and yeah. uh, and all others yeah. at that point right. in time. The um, some people, you know, Kellamond. 
we talked about didn't have people around mm-hmm. him. Kyle Trask had some great, great talent. talent. In fact, possibly two first round talents to go with him. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are knocking him for that. I think that's interesting. Why would you knock a guy for performing well with NFL talent? Right. He's going to be surrounded by NFL talent. Right. Would you not expect him then to do well with the talent that's around him? Right. Like, like I, I think the knock on Mond might be the fact that he didn't elevate the players around mm-hmm. him. But you should expect Kyle Trask to do well if he's got NFL talent. And, and now you're going to put him onto a team with NFL talent. And it, wide receivers were in love with so does that translate from the college level to the nfl level that he's going to be having kind of good players to throw to do you think you can put him on the washington football team and succeed man i i sure hope so i hope that they do draft him just because i'm a big fan of his i think he's an excellent college quarterback i don't know if that transfers like you said, he doesn't have the arm. He doesn't have mobility. But he can read a defense. He's a second read type quarterback, which means he just doesn't drop back and hit the first read and go. So I I like him a lot. You have to remember that this guy didn't even start in high school. He was not even a starter his senior year. He was behind... Uh, I can't remember the kid's name who was the quarterback at Miami this year. Uh, uh, to Eric. King. Yes, exactly. That's right. So he was behind him in high school. He came to Florida, I believe, as a walk-on. Maybe he wasn't a walk-on, but he he was an afterthought for for a couple of years, and he just stuck around and just kept plugging away and impressing the coaches until Felipe Franks got hurt. They put him in, and he never looked back. Because he knew where to get the ball. Like you said, he's got yeah, NFL six, receivers out there. Yeah. Find them and get his, it to them. His, uh, he's got, again, good numbers overall. If you're looking at just the stock numbers, uh, his first you know season behind the, the center there, 66.9% accurate, 2,900 yards, 25 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. Yeah. That's a good year. Yeah. If he, has, if he were to duplicate that in his rookie year, I think people would be really, really happy. Yeah. And, uh, and obviously you wouldn't see that though. He I think he's to me the scariest of the four we're gonna be talking about. The scariest about as in I you don't want him around. I don't scariest? want him. Oh, okay. I don't want I get him. that. I, I don't I don't I, I think that the the biggest concerns to me are the ones I mentioned. He's not mobile. No, not at all. And he and he doesn't have really the arm talent that you really want out of an NFL QB. I think that if they take Trask, I think that they need to take him in the fifth or fifth round or later. I know that he's he's being looked at in the fourth round, possibly even the third round by some teams, but I think this is somebody who is probably going to be a career backup. You know, I think he's going to be a Colt McCoy type mm-hmm. player. Uh, although Colt Colt actually is athletic and can can run, yeah. uh, but Trask I think is just going to be somebody who you can develop into being a quality guy who is worth going to talk about him. 10 years from now, holding a clipboard yeah. for some team, training up a, a rookie QB. But I don't, and because of that, that's why I don't, don't, don't spend a third or third round on him. Yeah. Probably don't take him before the fifth. Not for me. That's where I have him. Where would you, where would you place a pick grade on him? Yeah. Where would you be happy if Washington took him? Because I know you said you want him. Yeah. Like, you, you know, I, that's a very, biased. where would you take? That's him? a very biased opinion on my part that, I would want them to take him. So if they took him in the fourth round, I'd be okay with that. I don't think he's going to develop either because I just don't think he has the arm strength or mobility. You don't necessarily have to have mobility, although that's the way the NFL is going right now is they want all their quarterbacks to have that mobility. But, I mean, look look at Tom Brady. He's a classic zero mobility type quarterback. Now he's kind of the exception to what is the rule in the NFL right now. Uh, but, yeah, I think he's going to hold the clipboard. He's going to know the offense like the back of his hand. He's going to be a great guy in the in the film room. And 20 years from now, he's going to be the next Sean McVay, hot coach type of guy. And that's where he's going to max out on the field, I think, is, is a clipboard holder for sure. If that, who knows. But he's been very impressive. He was great for the Florida Gators the last two years. Very happy with 
what he did in reinvigorating the program with Coach Mullen. So, yeah, I just hope he comes here, but he's not going to develop. He's not one of those guys. I don't All think right. so. So maybe maybe then our next guy can has not as much experience as you would hope to see and doesn't have as impressive numbers as you would think for a guy who's being talked about quite highly right now. This is like one of the names that, that's starting to shoot up the draft boards in a lot of people's cases. This is Davis Mills yeah. out of Stanford. Uh, six foot four, two twenty five. Yeah. N- yeah, another another big guy. Sixty six percent, you know, accuracy rate this season. Shortened season for the for the Pac twelve. Uh, so numbers aren't going to be gaudy like you would expect. Uh, so only fifteen hundred yards, seven touchdowns, and three interceptions. How many games um, did they play? I think they played six. Mm, seven touchdowns. Totally. So and six yeah, games. Six in a bowl game. So I mean, yeah. They uh, not not that many games to to go off mm. of. Last season wasn't really any better though. Sixty five point six games, nineteen hundred yards, eleven touchdowns, five interceptions. Yeah. So if you're looking at the stats, you're like, why is this guy even being looked at? You know, one, this guy was the number one rated QB coming out of high school. Oh, okay. Uh, was he, he? This is somebody who's got the pedigree. He's only played 11 games, and that's largely because of two injuries. All right. That, that he's had to his legs, which is a problem. Sure. Because he's that makes him only an average kind of athlete. Yeah. You know, he's not somebody who's going to be, uh, you know, just running that RPO to great effect. He does have some pocket movement. Uh, teams are really starting to love this guy. Where are you sitting on? Uh, I don't. Yeah. It's it's weird how let's say at the beginning of the year and they start talking about all these quarterbacks who are going to be the top picks. And you talk about Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. These are, these are your knowns of quarterbacks who are going to be the top picks. You never hear about Zach Wilson. Nobody ever heard of Zach Wilson until about halfway through this year. And then he started getting some talk. You never heard of Davis Mills, Mills Davis, why you got names that are interchangeable <laughs> so you get them confused. But you never heard of this guy. So what separates Zach Wilson from Davis Mills? Right? What what makes them their their I mean Wilson can run, he's got that mobility, but Good why is it that everybody loves Zach Wilson and not everybody loves this other guy? Maybe they know more than we do, and that's why he's not talked about but like you said, he is rising up the the boards, or at least the chatter is out there about him mm-hmm. rising up. So, and I don't know anything about him. Never seen him play before. Again, out there West Coast, I don't really pay attention too much to to a West Not Coast. Not on teams. the Stanford Cardinal, you know, blogs no. reading about yeah. Davis Mill. I was trying to think so- of like like Jared Goff, right when he came out of Cal. And really, none of us had never heard of him until he was the number one pick, until everybody said, well, this guy's going to be the number one pick. Well, who the heck is Jared Goff? (laughs) And then you look at his stats when he was at Cal in his senior year in his 13 games. So he had 64% completion percentage. He had 43 touchdowns, Jared Goff did. And Davis Mills, in his two seasons combined, had maybe half of that. 18, not even half. Yeah, not even half. Not, so, not even half. so r- usually these guys stand out. These quarterbacks stand out. Mm-hmm. They elevate their program to different to a, to higher uh, winning. Like when you look at Dak Prescott, Mississippi State was winning and he was performing well. These guys that you've never heard of that got picked from these smaller schools, the Roethlisberger, elevated his teams. So when you get a guy like this who doesn't elevate his team, doesn't elevate his stats, and is just a big, strong quarterback, I just don't see how he's going to pan out. But again, these guys know way more than I do about this stuff. Yeah, so they were 4-2 and last year in the conference in the Pac-12 North. Mm -hmm. Um, They So... One of the reasons why he's shooting up the boards, and and honestly, this is a weird thing because I think a lot of this is you just start looking at, like you 
any any of the draft guys, they're going to start looking at the big names first. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at a 200 player board, you go through one through 50 first, right? Yeah. And so that's why we got all the names early on of like who you know who are the big people. Now people are in like that back half, the 100 to 200 list of names, yeah. and that's why now as we're getting closer, that's why he's starting to be like, oh wait, wait, like looking at this guy. And if you watch. Uh, if you watch some of the game tape and and uh, and whether or not you actually break down film or just watching the games, it's uh, it's interesting to see because you can see some really good things out of him. Mm -hmm. He does he he's 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 got a strong arm. He looks off the you know the coverage. Uh, it seems like again this is a guy who was highly touted coming out of high school. Yeah. And looked like he would have if he would have stayed healthy. Potentially one of the guys we're talking about being taken in the first round. Yeah. But he couldn't stay healthy. And his play hasn't necessarily like he he looks like he hasn't played many games, right? Six games this this uh, this season, and then uh, you know the season before that. So you're talking less than 20 games that this guy's played. Mm. Those and are a lot. So, of, there's a lot of red flags with this guy. Yeah, he and uh, actually I do believe he didn't even play a full season the season before. So this is because Davis of injury to me is or a, because he because wasn't of injury. Enough. He's okay. had he's had a couple of knee injuries mm. that have kept him from from playing. That's where this one, this is where this is risky. This, 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 this Davis Mills could be an excellent QB. I think he probably, ha I, I like him as a talent probably better than Kellen Mond. I feel safer taking a Kellen Mond. Yeah, uh, I agree. Than, than I do feel taking a Davis Mills. But I think that this is one of the, the Davis Mills might be one of the QBs that's a sneaky pick taken in the fourth or fifth round where you could potentially have a QB that does well, maybe, maybe not, you know, you don't want to get carried away. You know, you don't, you're not going to, I don't think, and, you know, you'd love to hit a Dak Prescott type player who's taken, you know, in the mid rounds and then becomes your, your starting QB. But I think Davis Mills might be that guy. You know, the problem I think for Washington is, as we've talked about, that needing that mobility. Mm -hmm. He's only average athletic, and he's got a couple. His legs have been knocked. Yeah. So as he gets older, as we know, those knees are not going to get any healthier. So Kyle, that's going to be interesting. Kyle Trask and Davis Mills are not Ron Rivera type quarterbacks. So mm -hmm. I would not expect them to draft either one of those. Um, for sure, I think Kellen Mond is that type of quarterback, and maybe even uh, Jamie Newman, who we're going to talk about next, is probably one of his kind of guys as well. But so but those two, no, I don't I don't see them drafting either one. Of them. Not, at, Not all? at all. Where would you Where would you think like Where would you place them? Like, what would be your round? I said fourth or fifth. Yeah. Late fourth would be pretty good, I think. For uh, fifth would probably be probably more accurate because again this is somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience but then again you're not going off of what they the experience are going off of where you think that that yeah. you know they're going to go right they're so, upside I, I i'd be okay with a fourth as a flyer maybe you get yourself a kirk cousins type player yeah man you'd love so, for a kirk cousins type of player would would take <laughs> a Type of type player, of player, right? Probably wouldn't take Kirk Cousins back. Oh, oh but, I would. I mean, they can't do it for a, a billion reasons, but I would love to have yeah. Kirk Cousins back here. All right. So moving off from Davis Mills, yep. yeah, we're going to be talking about the probably the he's not the tallest, but he as far as the the ones who are built here, uh, he's this is an athletic QB at six four two thirty. Yeah. Okay, this this guy is probably closest to Cam Newton than 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 the, any of the ones that we've been talking about. Um, so why is Jamie he, Newman? So why is Jamie Newman not being talked about in the first round? He opted out of the season. Mm -hmm. So he, well, you know this, who else? This did? is an interesting character. Trey Lance. Micah. Trey. Okay. So so why is he not up there with Trey? Lance? I'm just wondering. I'm not trying to grill so anybody. This, just... What I think really kind of this. There's a lot of unknown. He's not he's not a polished passer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, that's a big thing. He opted out. Senior bowl. He started off strong in practice, which is really where that is at, right? Yep. But then the rest of the oh, week, he poop. just did not have just did not have a great great season. He looked like a guy who opted out yeah. of uh, of football for for the 2020th season. Um, not as accurate as you as, as some of the other guys. Best season was at 60.9. Oof, um, that's terrible. 
Yeah, not not great. 2,800 yards, 26 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, mm. ran for 574 yeah. yards off of 180 carries. Guy's definitely a dual threat. And what, he's what is very, his size very again? Athletic. 6'4", 230. Oof. He's a big dude. He's 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 my size. Like, he's a yeah. big dude. 6'4", 230, um, and he's running for 500 yards? Yeah, yeah that sounds like He's a great dude. athlete. Yeah. He's just not a developed passer. He's got an interesting – so he was – in Wake Forest, he was pretty much their entire offense, mm. uh, both seasons that he played, um, which uh, he, he didn't win the starting job in Wake Forest. Uh, he got beat out by a, a true freshman who then broke his leg. Yeah. And then Newman was put in, and they were just so out, you know, in love with what he did that first season that he just never, never gave up the job. To develop further, he transferred to Georgia. Oh, yeah. But then... But then the situation happened where he opted out. If he stays and he plays in Georgia, if he if he if he plays in Georgia, we might be talking about Jamie Newman in the first round. But he didn't. He opted out. Yeah. He didn't. No one really loved him in the Senior Bowl. But this is a guy who, kind of like what I was talking with Kellen Mond, you can put packages in for this rookie. You know, put put. Fits out on the wide receiver position yeah. for some crazy plays, yeah. and let let uh, Jamie Newman, you know, cook as they say these days. Whether or not that be with a, a designed run or an open pass play for for him to build that confidence. Like I said, he's not a developed passer. This was prob this is probably the the QB that most needs the time, you know, on the bench to develop. Yeah. So. I again, he's a guy I don't know much about. I did watch a little bit, but you know what? Everybody watches a little bit of film, as they say on YouTube. You watch some highlight packages and such. You have no idea what defense the team is in, what he's supposed to be looking at, all that stuff. But you get an idea, kind of uh, how accurate they are, or how athletic they are. So I don't know much about him. But it does, it it will always bother me when you have a quarterback who has very little experience. Experience is a huge factor in the at the quarterback position, and that's why I do like Kellen Mond because he does have that four years. He didn't necessarily flourish, but he has all that experience. So if you have a guy who started for a year, that's all he started at Wake Forest was the one year. He he had, he he, uh, he took over for the starter midway through the season mm-hmm. uh and then he played a full year as the starter in 2019 yeah yeah that's not a lot of experience i mean the quarterback just needs needs that time the reps mm-hmm. the the game the, reps the game the reps thing. yeah they yeah, need absolutely. all of that so you know he's there's there's a lot of um jamie newman's out there that have the skills have the size have the talent who never pan out for a variety of reasons. And he just seems to be, to me, to be another one of those guys. But you got to love his his size and his athleticism. So that could be something that you could develop. I wouldn't take a uh, – I wouldn't use a pick on him until maybe sixth round, but – Sixth uh, round, yeah. really? But what do I, I think that I think that he probably – I think he goes before the sixth. I think this is somebody who – I. I don't know that I'd be happy with a fourth round pick being taken uh, on him. I don't necessarily think I would disagree with it, but I think fifth is probably where I'd be like, great. We got a, we got a solid, you know, develop, you know, QB in the fifth with, with Jamie Newman. Um, So it'll be interesting. I want you to rank them right now. We got four QBs. Yeah rank them and the order that you want Washington you think that you, not not that you think but that you know and deep in your heart that you want to be playing quarterback for Washington and these these are the only four I get to choose from these are the only four we'll we'll talk about some of the the flyers that we can take and uh, we're not going to talk about the 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 first round talents yeah. that we don't think that that they're going to get yeah. so okay these are these are your four. Rank them in in order. These that you would like them to Washington to to saddle up. All with. right, and it also doesn't matter where they're picked. 
right? It doesn't matter where okay. they're picked. Yeah, we're not saying, you know, obviously Kellen Mond, we're, we're saying they're going to draft a little bit higher uh, than Davis Mills or Jamie Newman. Yeah. Uh, but I want, I just want to know who okay. you want out of these four in order. All right, so I definitely, Kellen Mond would be the number one guy. I think mm-hmm. Jamie Newman would probably be number two. Mm-hmm. And then Kyle Trask and then uh, Davis Mills. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Uh, not my list, so you're wrong. So <laughs> right, right. we'll, just, we'll just, just get that out the, there. Yeah, just put that out there. You're Jamie wrong. Jamie Newman is actually, you know, the one that I think I'm most intrigued by. And so you mentioned we're not, we don't, we can't, we don't have the the full film, right? Yeah. We're not film guys. We're not going to be breaking it down. Even if we could, we're seeing game film, right? So when I watched the games, and I watched a lot of, a lot, a lot of game film uh, footage on these guys uh over the last couple weeks okay. in preparation for this jamie newman is one of those guys that just stood out to me like he was exciting to watch yeah. like what so that's what i look at when i'm looking at college qbs right so i i want to see that exciting play i want them to stand out with their team and jamie newman did that like when you if you watch a wake forest game that he played in he's the one you're focused on he's the one that you're just like that guy can play football. Okay, and so that's why I have him number one. I don't again. I don't. I have him in the fifth round, but that's a guy that I'm just like he is fun to watch. He is somebody who I think would be good for Washington. Okay, that's interesting. Dave, All right, Davis Mills is actually my second Oopy. one here. This is a guy. I think that there's just enough there. Like I said, that this is somebody who this is this is a Kirk Cousins. Okay, this is a guy who I think is going to show the potential and is gonna is gonna do well if he doesn't have to play right away. Okay, and you, if you even have to put, you've mentioned Fitz not playing a full sixteen years. If you have to start Davis Mills, as long as you're starting him in the later half of the season, I think that he has the pedigree to do well. Okay, so that's and I think I think there's the the upside is what I'm looking. And again, when I watch the Stanford games, he's not blowing you out of the water, but he also you can see where he's making the smart decisions. He makes lots of bad decisions still, mm. but you would expect that. Kellen Mond is who I take third. Kellen Mond just I there's something about his game that like again, he has that experience, but he never really wowed me when i watched and this this is this is that again that's just what i base it off yeah. of i think that he would be you know an excellent pickup i just think a lot of people are expecting him to turn into a dak prescott because there's a lot of similarities there in the game yeah for them you know it's athletic you know took a you know played with a you know these texas and a&m was a good team last year right so there's a lot like you mentioned mississippi state for for Dak Prescott was a good team with Dak under center, so I think I think maybe it's the expectation that I'm shying mm. away from. Yeah, because it's just like I I would be happy with Kellen Mond, but I think that people are expecting him to be the next Dak Prescott, and that worries me. Sure, that just there worries aren't me. there aren't that many Dak Prescotts in the world. There no, are only it's, it's, seven or eight of Dak Prescott. Yeah, so it, it's a rare, rare feat. Right. And then obviously Kyle Trask is my number four. Uh, I, I, I'll be, uh, I'll be honest heart. with you. I don't want them to take him at <laughs> okay, all. Okay, that's fine. At I all. really don't. At all. I just, I, I think that I just don't see him being somebody for the team. Yeah. I think that he's he'll he'll be a fine, you know, backup quarterback holding the clipboard. You know, what's his face? that just got released has made millions of dollars like a chase Daniel or something. Or chase, yeah. Chase Daniels yeah. of the world. Right. So I think that he would, he would do well to be a chase Daniel and uh, that's great, but we don't want to chase Daniel here at Washington. We want somebody who can potentially develop into our starter. Yeah. So that way we're not having to play this guessing game of, Hey, is Washington going to trade up? to get one of the top QBs yeah. and then not even having that pan out, that setting you a couple couple rounds back. So I think Jamie Newman's the most exciting of the four. Okay. I, I I think that there's a – and maybe it's because he didn't play last year that there's that kind of like, hey, what are you, what are you getting here? Yeah. This is, a, again, a guy who if he played at Georgia, 
likely could have pushed himself, you know, just much like Zach Wilson into the conversation of somebody who's being picked in the first round. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It's going to be very well, interesting. If anybody named Kellen, Jamie, Kyle, or Davis plays one regular season snap for this team next year, it's a complete dumpster fire. That means all <laughs> hell is broken. I disagree. Loose. I disagree with you. I could be just oh. Fitz got injured. Okay. And he's got to he's got to have that Taylor. old man game. There's I'm saying right now that I have I I would not be surprised if we if if Washington drafts a QB mm-hmm. that they put that rookie QB in before Heineke. But the situation is going to be it's going to be interesting cuz you know T- Taylor Heineke can play. The yeah. guy can ball out yeah. when needed. I was wrong. Right? About He's not somebody you're going to trust the, the, you know, you're not going to hand over the keys to the franchise right. to. But he's somebody who can ball out when needed. The thing is, is it depends. Do they have a game they can lose? Do they need to see what they have in this QB? Right. Because if you, again, if you're point. Seeing, so I don't think that, I think if they have a game that they can lose, I don't necessarily think it's a bad, they're in a bad situation. Oh, you You'll mean see. like if they've already made the playoffs and and yeah, and they're just playing uh, or, for no reason, just to put them in there. Yeah. I think what you would probably see this is this is when's the last time if, that happened? Man, why are we talking about our players being injured? Didn't we go over this? This is a bad thing. This is a bad thing. Let's say Fitz decides that he's a little old and he just needs that game off. Yeah. Right? You have the NBA. They the, the guys they take games off. Fitz decides he needs to take a game off. And, we'll play it that okay. way. Okay. And so while okay. he's off, he trips over well, his son's toys and no, and no, tears Why, we're not talking injury. We're not talking injury. In fact, I'm going to go one further. Okay. At halftime, he decides that he just doesn't need to play the rest of the game. That he really just needs to to relax. Didn't okay. somebody do that like a couple years ago? They retired. They retired, retired at halftime. The of the game. Played for the Jets. You can't blame the That's guy. True. Um, so he <laughs> fits, sits out a half yeah. Heineke plays the rest of the half, but I think I would not be surprised if Rivera, if they have faith in the rookie that they picked, yeah. if they say this next game, we're going to actually play a Kelly, uh, a Kyle, a I Davis, that's, a Jamie. That's I, not good. I, 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 you never know. It depends. It depends on where that, that person's developed. Yeah. Right. I don't think I think that someone like Kellen is probably someone who you put in there more likely or maybe even a Jamie Newman who who, again, you have plays designed for. I think it's less likely you see a Kyle Trask or Davis Mills. in. Yeah. If Washington's playing them, then things have probably gone, you know, and hit the fan. But we'll see that. I don't know. Like I said, Jamie Newman's my guy as far as like out of these names that I kind of I would like to see playing in a Washington uniform. But there are other QBs out there. We're not going to go into depth like we have. I don't have the stats in front of me of these guys. Not even the one I want to talk about. Mm. But are there any any ones in the late rounds, you know, the sixth and seventh rounds, maybe maybe they end up undrafted. Uh, any QB flyers that you would be no. excited about taking on? No. no, no, absolutely not. I'm not even excited about any of these guys, really. I, I wouldn't be excited if they drafted him unless they can sell me on why they drafted him. But anybody outside of them? No, not at all. When's the last time somebody not named Tom Brady worked out that from the sixth round on or undrafted has worked out? I mean, there's Tom Brady Kurt feelings, man. and Kurt Warner. Hurt Kurt Warner's feelings. There's... You, Fitzpatrick, our current... Or Fitzpatrick. Our current QB has had a... Has had a I think that there there's... You don't ever bet, you know, money on these guys right. panning out. Right. But I do think that the later rounds, you can find some people who might surprise you. There's Taylor Heineke is not a guy who was exactly lauded, but then he had an amazing game that earned him a few million dollars. Yeah. So I think there's potential there. But the QB flyers, I don't. There's a lot of them. I looked over quite a few of them, and I just wasn't excited. I was born in Oklahoma, Uh-oh. so I, I watch a lot of the Sooner football, yeah. right? So it also means I have a heated rivalry with the Texas Longhorns. Yeah. It also means that I saw when oh. I lived there, for I've lived in Oklahoma for 13 years. It means I also saw a lot of uh, of Longhorns games. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and in that, Sam Ellinger is a name right. that uh, that uh, his name popped right. up. Yeah, I buddy. think that he. He he's he, I'm not I'm not saying I want Washington to take mm-hmm. him, but out of the flyers late that you're like, hey, this is a guy who you know might be on the cheap who you can keep around for a, for a few years. Mm-hmm. He's somebody I would I would think is is good. He's also uh, an athletic guy. They uh, they showed I remember seeing this on Twitter. He like threw like a 60 70 yard bomb. So a lot of people are like, he doesn't have the arm strength. Uh, he might not always have the game time stre- arm strength, but he's somebody who's got a lot of moxie. He definitely has that. I think I think that if you take him in the late rounds, you're going to see that much like you see Taylor Heineke. He might be just a cheaper Taylor yeah. Heineke for Washington going forward. That's probably the only one though that I'd be like, okay, cool. Anybody else? I'm just going to be like, hmm. All right, we could have had a, probably a different skill player taken. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where Washington goes with the QB position. Do they just skip QB entirely this year and kick that can down to next season where hopefully they're picking in the late first round again and they'd have to trade up some serious money to get a a QB for the future. Never know with Washington. Lots of crazy stuff going on them. That was the game, folks. Let's move on to our post-game Chat, we're, we, this this week we're going to stick with our Washington football team uh, because they did something. Now, I'm a little disappointed here. I'm a season ticket holder. My wife and I are on there. We're, we're Gold Star members. We, we should be getting this email. We have not gotten an email with names. Really? So, Jason Wright, you can at me. Let me know where my, my list of names is. I'll, 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 I'll let you know. I'm actually a little disappointed. I'm gonna I'm gonna air some serious grievances here real quick okay. about being a season ticket holder. We we pay our money. We got our tickets. We're excited to to go to the games this year. They you know part of the signing up and being being this member is we're supposed to get a, a game jersey, right? We're supposed to get a jersey. My wife was supposed to get a Chase Young jersey, really, uh, but they didn't send the right size. They didn't send her what she asked for. We we're still waiting on a replacement. We did this all the way. In like November, October of last year, you know, we we bought the we got on this, mm. and we still don't have our game jersey. We're not getting emails on the names. What's going on with that, huh? I'm a little upset. Little upset. Why are you smiling if you're a little upset? Because I also see these dorky names <laughs> that they've sent to people. Yeah. I want to give my opinion on these dorky and, names. And you that didn't they, get that the email given. to, to no, ask for your opinion. Not, we've not That's unless Jazzy is holding out on. Yeah. And I've asked her, I was just like, I showed her, I was just like, hey, we should be getting yeah. this. I was like, well, you know, let me know when we get this so we can talk this over so I don't have to live with the Swifts and the Rubies. Well, let me, let me ask you something. This is not an original thought. I didn't, I didn't come up with this myself, but it, I find it intriguing that this might be the case. Are they doing this? to kind of throw you off the scent to Mm. be able to say, look, there are no good names out there, (laughs) right? So let's just stick with what we have, which is the Washington football team. You're right. That is not the, it's not an original thought. I have heard that one being, I agree with it. So I, I trust Jason, Jason Wright had come out and he had talked about this. Um, This they're not. Oh, bless you. (laughs) Ooh, pardon me. The uh, so one of the things that they that, that Jason had, Jason Wright had said was that they're trying to get a feel for what kind of groups of names people are okay with, right? People have like an affinity. It seems like a lot of people are really in love with animal names. Like they just want an animal. Yeah. So like okay, so they're seeing where that stands. There's things where like you have the monarchs and the commanders. Like okay, that's another group. So they're trying to see where the fandom. You know, fee, well, how they feel about these certain groupings of names. So it, it is, it. I think that they are closing in. I think that the name might be in here. Hmm. Um, so I think they might sneak it in to see, like, hey, are people okay with this? And so I think that's a fairly interesting thing. I do want to go over these names, and we can just keep. We can do lightning round yeah. because I, I don't. I don't necessarily know if I have all of them. I do have roughly fifteen. 
you know, to 20 sitting in front of me right now. Okay. Monarchs. No. Warriors. No. Maybe. Rising. What? Yeah. Red Wolves. Maybe. Commanders. No. Ambassadors. No. Wayfarers. I don't even know what that is. No. Renegades. No. Aviators. No. Presidents. No. Swifts. I mean, what is the Swifts? Rubies. Why don't you just call them Taylors? Uh, <laughs> Rubies. Is that seriously on the list? <laughs> it's seriously because on this list. Do you, is there somebody over there who really thought, hmm, Washington Rubies. That's good. Put it on the list. No. All right. Sorry. Pilots. I'm supposed to be just giving you quick. Uh, lightning round. Lightning round. We'll talk about some of these. No. Washington Capital City Football Club, no. CCFC. No. Nope. Mm-mm. Wild Hogs. Maybe. Riders. No. Griffins. The RG3s? We're going to be the Washington <laughs> RG3s? No. Armada? No. Washington, D.C. Football Club, the DCFC. Mm, you got my attention there. Okay. Keep going. Is that it? That's it. Okay. That's all the names. Yeah, yeah. I think we probably it, it, have. You see any ac- that I missed? Presidents? Yeah, we got presidents. Um, we, I hate that one. Aces? Oh, you know what? I didn't have aces on my list here. Uh, here's a here's I, a bunch I don't I don't think you had on there. So you had aces. Okay. You had all right. So now I'll give you the lightning round. Uh, first city football club. I don't know mm-hmm. how we could be the first city because we're not the first city. We're not the first city. Uh, archers. Maybe you said that one. No, I didn't say archers. I don't like uh, archers. beacons. No. Belters. D- no. What? I'm a. I'm. A, I mentioned last week. I'm a theater guy. I've been in some musicals. No, that's not who you want. You don't want us to be the belters. Does that mean like somebody who screams loudly or somebody yeah, who well, runs like a sander? Like a, a that's true. Sander. Maybe it's that. I obviously theater background. I went with somebody who's singing loudly. Yeah. I, I, uh, Red Tails. No. I, Razorbacks. I'm on the fence, but I said no. What's that? Razorbacks. Razor, no. Defenders. No. And football team no you know how i feel about football team which might surprise you out of the list that i gave you the one that probably intrigued me the most the was washington dc football mm, right right dcfc yeah i still think they need a i i still think they need a mascot but i think there's a lot of potential there with dcfc i don't know i just like i kind of like it dcfc that's it but we call them the hogs i'm telling you that's growing on me. I shot you down. I thought it was a dumb idea. Maybe it's because when you were like Washington football club or Washington football team and then call them hogs, I just didn't like, that's not, that's not great. I'm not vibing it. Mm-hmm. But when I heard Washington DC football club, the DC FC, I think it's the DC FC. I'm just like, that's good. That's good. That's good. You can call, you just call them Washington. You can call them DCFC. You can call them the Hogs or whatever potential you know mascot we tie to them. I have to say I'm coming around to it, Stoner. <laughs> I'm coming around to it. You call them DCFC, and I'm loving it. I, I, I think I think I think I'm loving it. I think I'm I'm really growing on that yeah. one. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like a lot of these other ones, I know Red Wolves has a lot of fans. Get rid of red and maybe just the wolves, but then that's also just kind of plain. Yeah, it's not something like I like the idea of you know calling it the den, you know, fans howling. Yeah, like all that stuff's pretty exciting. Out of all the animals, the hogs. I know I mentioned that uh, as well when we talked names, where the hogs were something that I thought was pretty good because it ties to the the fandom. I've seen some horrible mock-ups of that. Not a huge fan of the mock-ups I've seen for the hogs. Um, but then, like, all these others are just garbage, right? You mentioned aces, rubies, pilots, griffins. Rubies. You didn't even know what griffins were. Yeah. Like, I know because I'm an a entire big geek nerd. But you're like, what is a griffin? I had to explain to you yeah. uh, what a griffin was. But then DCFC yes. pops up and I'm like, mm. kind of like that. And, it, and again, you like don't that. give like them that. a nickname, but you just kind of call them the hogs. So they're not the DCFC hogs. But they're just yeah. DCFC. But yeah. everybody refers to them as the Hogs because that's kind of what you're going to build your brand around. I like it. I think we got to give Jason Wright a call. As soon as I get my list, Jason, 
I will be happy to fill that out. Go ahead and you can hit me up on my Twitter at the Nathan Perry, or of course you can find us both on Twitter at Ref the District. Stone Dog is out there as well. That's the Stoner. Stoner is uh, Stone Dog twenty three on Twitter. Yep. You can hit us up on our email, Ref the District. We'll see where we end up with these names. You can always catch us live ten a.m. on. Well, not always because obviously we're recording this one. <laughs> always except but, for today. Yeah. Normally we record, we, we, we air these lives. We broadcast live 10 a.m. on you, our YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, please, please click that bell and subscribe. That just, just do us a great favor. And uh, we, we're, we would really appreciate that. Uh, so please subscribe to that soon. We will be on the podcast levels. We're still, uh, we're still trying to get to that. We will. I hear it's, uh, you know, I was being told today. It's really easy. You just got to do it. So uh-huh. that'll be something we'll be getting to. Next week. Next week. Big show. Is big, big show. It is the the inaugural, the first ever mock draft, ref the district mock draft, because I gotta ruin it apparently. <laughs> so ref the district's first inaugural mock draft. We're just doing the first round. We called in some favors. And we've got several people picking for us. Most people are picking for their their fandom, their team. We do have a couple pinch hitters, some familiar faces that you'll have seen. Uh, throughout our time here on Ref the District. Really excited about this, Stoner. I am too. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. I've already seen some of the videos. They're very entertaining. You're going to want to tune in to watch that. That's next Sunday, just before the actual draft, our last show before the actual draft. And also, we are going to be live tweeting the draft as well. We're not going to be live on air, but we are going to be live tweeting the draft both from our accounts, uh, your account at the Nathan Perry and at Stone Dog 23 and at Ref the District. So that's it's going to be a big week. I can't wait for the draft. It's almost like Christmas. I'm really excited because you get these new presents, right, that get to Super be on exciting. your team. It's really exciting. I'm looking forward to it. I can't imagine being, being a fan of a team that doesn't have a first-round pick, right? You're just like, oh, I don't want to watch it. But you have to still watch it. Yeah. Because you're like, what if they trade into the That's first That's right. Round? They could. Like they, they Who, could who are they? They could. There's at least one team. Seattle doesn't have a first round. Is there another one? There's two teams. Yeah. yeah. There was two Seattle. teams without uh, without a pick, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I can't. I don't have them off the top I just know of Seattle's game. one because they never have. Washington has a pick. They're picking 19th. And we will be picking one as well. Who knows who will be taken there at the 19th pick with our pick, mock by the draft. Way. I hate I hate our pick, I should say. I hate it. We're, I hate it. We're not supposed to. I'm just saying I hate it. Do that? Why are you going to do that? We can have that conversation next week. I'm Nathan Perry. He's the stoner. This is Ref the District.